Hey guys, we're back. Listen, first of all, before I begin, let me go ahead and apologize greatly to everybody for um, me being late, a day late on this video. Honestly, mm -hmm. like, I, yesterday I was, I was like, hold on, my bad, but um, yesterday I was like, I was so out of it. I was. I did not have a lot of energy. I had a lot to do, and it was. It was too much. So I rather. So I was like, okay, either. I just post the same video a day late, or no video at all. Because I, I would not want to give y'all a crappy ass video. So, um, let's get into um, Star Season 2, Episode 6, Faking It. So, um, we start off with Carlotta and the girls. You know, they're in court trying to defend Simone for skipping curfew. And the judge pretty much, you know, they all pretty much had, you know, the down low of everything. Of everything that's going on and they've went all through the um, case filings and stuff and the judge came to the ultimate decision that her foster care services of having Carlotta um, be her legal guardian has all been denied so at that point Simone snaps and she pretty much you know musically expresses her anger listen listen I'm all up for musical numbers because, you know, I love musicals and everything, but I don't like when, I, I, especially with this show, I don't like when this show does this. I hate how they have to sing about how they feel every single time. Why can't they just act that shit out? Like, if, if Simone or someone, like, if Becky, if she was, if somebody on this show was pissed... Why the fuck can't they just act that shit out? Why do they gotta sing it? Y'all leave down in the comments if y'all feel about that about the same way too. Oh my gosh. So the whole thing turns out to be a daydream song. And you know, Star and Alex are on the other side of the door trying to get Samo out since she locked herself in the in the closet, banging her head, you know, back on the door. And you know, Star's like you know, you got to get yourself up and you got to focus on the music because the music is what's going to help get you out of jail. So fair enough, Simone agreed and they went on ahead and she got back to the music. So, um, meanwhile, Ayana, she's worried about the whole situation with Noah posting this um, Black Lives Matter post after Lucky's death and that's pretty much making the press look at her company sideways and it's also causing a detriment to her father's image and reputation so he's on the phone with her pretty much cussing her out saying listen you gotta fix this crap because it's making my image look bad so you gotta speak up and you gotta speak up now so that you can defend the family name and my image because we're not having this and that's pretty much what was going on between them so moving back to Carlotta, she goes over to um, confront Ayana for not giving the girls what they what they need after all this time. And on her way to the meeting, she meets up with Hahil, and she goes on ahead and confronts him first about the little stunt that he pulled last in the last episode with um, Andy and Angel. Pretty much talk about so you weaseled your boys to spot the showcase, huh? I bet you feel real good about that shit. Yeah, I feel good. What's good? Oh, that's okay because I don't compete with Pillow Talk. Ugh. Look, I put together a strong act. I gave her what she wanted. Mm-hmm. I bet you did, you nasty. You little nasty. Carlotta, don't go there. Oh, I promise, I will never go there ever again. Then she walks off. <laughs> so, meanwhile, we get the girls. They're pretty much trying to find different ways on how they could be, um, on how they can get their music going. And I'm like, damn, y'all still struggling? Like, 
I need to be on the creative team, and I need to be with the writers so that we can go ahead and end that shit so that they can be famous already because I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of this shit. But, hey, if this is the only way how they're going to be able to continue this show, then, hey, do what you got to do. So they do research, and they try to find this music artist named um, Joyce to pretty much help promote their music. So um, the girls go out, and they all have their different ways of catching the info to find Joyce. Alex meets up with Gigi, Kiki Palmer, to um, get connections from her since she already realized that um, Gigi and Joyce are buddy buddies. So she tried to get a connections from them, but her chances were slim thick because her opportunity got cut short. And then Simone tried to get connections with um, Ayana, but instead, she's trying... Throughout this episode, Simone's pretty much been trying to figure out ways how to get herself out of jail so that she can be free and do her own thing with the girls. So she contacts with Ayana to pretty much get the 411 on how she can... Um, on how she can help her... Um, you know, find some lawyers to help get her out of jail. But Ayana was ignoring her the whole time, so she snaps her about some stop playing. I mean, if I mean, if you don't like us, then kick us out. And I actually agree with Simone on that because this whole season, Ayana has really been putting these girls down. But at the end of the day, Noah and 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 take three. They're the only artists that's really being seen in this whole situation in Midtown thing. And my whole thing is, if you really didn't like them, why did you keep them? Why didn't you just kick them out if you really didn't like them that much, Ayana? Like, seriously. I was on Simone's son on that shit. So, she opens up about her personal problems and Ayana deeply connects with her. And she goes on ahead and promises to call legal to help her out. So, um, meanwhile, um, so meanwhile, um, we get Derek with, um, the Muslim girl that he defended at the store a few episodes back. They're pretty much working on this little documentary together of, um, projecting domestic abuse and violence. So, after finishing up, you know, he thanks her, and she thanks him for all the help that he's done, and, you know, they give each other a hug. But, at the second, when when they got done hugging, she noticed that, you know, he got a little excited there during their hug, and, you know, she got awkward real quick, so, yeah. Good luck explaining that to Alex. Then we get into fucking Brody and Hunter's mom. See, I'm tired of them. They need to go. They really need to go. But, anywho, um, they um, meet up and they're pretty much planning on hacking Star's phone and deleting her images so that she can go ahead and plant some fake images on there to make it seem as if that Star really had killed Hunter. Bitch, let that shit go. Don't nobody give a fuck about your son no more. He's dead. Let it go. Move on. But of course she ain't. So, you know, Brody was hesitant at first with going, like, being along with the plans and everything because he didn't want to hurt Star because he might have a soft side for her, but I don't know. I still don't trust him, but I don't know. And she's like, oh... I mean that's fine. I mean I that's fine. I've got I got people that you owe money for them, um in Vegas. You know, they can they can pop their asses over here and you know they can um give you a little um heads up, you know, pop pop. You going you going to do that? You you going to do that? Yeah, I didn't think so. So, um yeah, we get that and he goes on ahead with the plan. So, um, later on, Ayana pretty much tells Noah that, you know, he needs to move on from Lucky and focus on Midtown she's a, since she's already working her butt off on saving the company's reputation from his mess. And, 
you know, she's trying to tell him, you know, you gotta, you gotta move on, get your head back in the game. But he's, he's like, you know, I'm not doing it. All you care about is Midtown, and I'm still upset about Lucky. And he pretty much storms off. So then we get back to Carlotta, who then meets up with Ayana finally. And she confronts her about allowing Angel and Andy to even do their little performance. And they get credibility after their first performance. But the girls, you know, they've been working their asses off since the beginning of the season. And they're still not getting their credibility. They're not still getting their, their work. So it's like, what are you doing? Do you not care about other people besides yourself? Like, what are you doing? And... She needs to, um, she also mentions that Ayana also needs to, um, like, actually do something about the press since they're already giving her the bad name for her company. You know, she needs to go in ahead and do something to help show that she does care about the situation that she needs to move on from it so that she can keep her, her public image at a decent, at a decent, at a decent pace. This strikes a nerve in Ayana, and she snaps a call out talking about some, I'm a professional. It's all about money and music. Kalala's like, bitch, wake up. Handle your business so that we can get back to business. I'm like, Kalala, you better do that. <laughs> but of course, Ayana didn't get the memo. So then after that, she um, she checks up with Noah to see how he's doing. He's pretty much down to his luck. He is, like, off his ass right now. And, you know, she lets him know that if he needs someone to talk, you know, she's there for him. And before she left, she noticed the track that um, him and Alex recorded that he started playing. And she ended up liking the track. And she decided that she could go and use that to um, help pr um, promote their music. So there's that. Then we get into Star meeting up with Brody. And they pretty much have their little conversation about how Brody wants to arrange a dinner with him and, and Star. So that they can um, connect better. So that he can go ahead and connect with Star. And then Simone. And then them together. So that they can be a family again. So he asks for money, and she asks for money, and, you know, he also offers that he wants to um, also go to the Midtown event with them while the girls were going to perform there. She was like, no, I don't want you to go. You're not going. Oh, well, then if I'm not going, then you're not going. How about that? Okay. Be here at 8. I really don't. So then later on, Star gets dressed up for the event. And, you know, she gets comfort from Miss Bruce because she's a little nervous about the whole thing. And, bitch, I don't blame her. And in pops up Noah, high as shit because he's on drugs now. And, and um, sorry about that. It's... it's Mm, okay. So, um... Mm, okay, so then, um... Noah pops up, and, you know, he's high as shit. And Star's not here for it. He's like, you know, I want us to go to the movies. I want us to spend time together. Star's like, um, no. What you need to do is you need to take your ass back home and get some rest. I know you're grieving, and now's not the time. You've been using, haven't you? No, I haven't been using. I'm not even that high. You are high. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. So, fair enough. He leaves. So, then they get to um, Brody and Star. They get to the little dinner whatnot. And, you know, Star notices that Brody went on ahead and stole this necklace. I keep saying necklace. Um, fucking bracelet from this female. And she thought that he was the one. Who, he thought that. Yeah, she, uh, she thought 
that he stole it from her, but really he's like trying to help her find Joyce. And fair enough, he gave the, the um, bracelet back to the female who turns out to be Joyce. And it was actually played by Tiana Taylor. And I'm like, <laughs> Lee Daniels. Lee Daniels. How do you get Tiana Taylor casted on this show? Answer me that. How do you get Tiana Taylor on here? <laughs> but if, if she got to go for a change, go ahead for a change, girl. So, um, you know... You know, she meets up with Joyce and, you know, they. she introduces herself and then the group and, you know, she asks to um, get some help about their music. And then later on, later on in the evening, they get back home and Star is just simply shocked that Brody even helped her find Joyce in the first place. But she still just wasn't interested. And I still don't blame her because I still don't trust the nigga. So later, Alex goes for round two on finding on finding connections with Joyce through Gigi again, but at a pool party. And, you know, they have a little moment together. You know, Alex, you know, opens up to Gigi about her personal issues with her dishonesty and her disconnections with Derek and how she feels like that she's too bougie for everything. And then Gigi ends up teaching her how to be ghetto and shit talk about some see you you are too bougie like you gotta go with like eh. <laughs> and then okay Noah pops up again but this time he's like butt ass naked jumps in the pool and starts taking pictures of him and Alex together out of nowhere and this scares them both off I swear, it's like, no, it's like the freaking pop-up queen. Not the king, the queen. I don't know if that's, I don't, look, I don't know if that's that, that weed he be smoking, or that, um, that, that, that Grey Goose, but he's been popping up too damn much this episode, and it's kind of getting scary. I'll be damned if I find a man like that. I'll have to drop kick his ass. But, um, anywho, anywho, um, so when he comes back with the images, Alex is worried that those, that they were going to go viral, but they went viral anyway, and Gigi's like, no, don't, like, take this as a, as a way of help building your image to help get the company back to where it needs to be, and fair enough, Alex agreed to it, some shit that only happens in L.A., so then the girls meet up together after finding their um research and everything and Alex talks to Star about how her and Noah took some pictures at the pool party the night before and clearly Star got in her feelings about the entire situation and she's trying hard to keep her personal um feelings together but eventually they're going to come out and people are going to start noticing. So then Simone comes up with so much hope that she thought that she could get Carlotta to go back to court and help testify to um to testify through her emancipation to help get her out of jail, but they were unable to do that because Carlotta got records and if she goes up and testifies, then her testimony is only going to go up against Simone, and Simone is just going to end up being in jail for good. And of course, Star ain't going to do it because she got records too. So this hurts. So this got Simone in her like deep in her feelings, and she feels like that she has been let down. So then Carlotta later um, confronts Ayana about you know giving Simone lies and broken promises, and lets her know that at the end of the day. You know, she needs to stop letting, you know, the girls down and actually do something to help save her damn business instead of just sitting there and letting all hell break loose all around her. So then she later hangs up, coming to find out that she's getting head from high heel as they literally spoke. I'm like, you know what? At this point... This is where I draw the line with this show. Because every single person on this show has all literally proved themselves to either be dumb, stupid, thirsty, selfish, or just 
playing fake. It's like the only genuine person that actually makes any sense out of this whole show, out of this whole cast, is Carlotta. Damn. So then, you know, after Hahelen and Ayana have their little fuck time, she kicks him out so that she can try to focus on her work, and he just wants to mess around again and think about his music. But she's not working for it. She wants to try her best to keep her name in the light so she can prove herself to her family once more. And, of course, excuse me, Hahel just wasn't here for it. And he tells her to fix it instead of just sitting around whining about it. And she really does. So later on, you know, Derek meets up with um, Alex to discuss the situation, how their day went and everything. And, you know, he opens up and lets her know that him and the Muslim girl, they pretty much had this little documentary project that they got going on. And, you know, after they thanked each other and hugged each other, he opened up to her about how he ended up getting the boner from that. And he's never felt that honest about anything in his life that that strikes the nerve in Alex because she was she was inspired and amazed by how honest he was because to be honest most guys don't really like have the balls to really talk about you know situations like you know them getting boners out of nowhere you know most guys they don't they don't have the balls to really talk about that. And for Derek to, like, open up and let Alex know about that, that's bold. That's a real man right there. Go ahead, Derek. So he comforts her and lets her know that, you know, it's okay. Like, it's going to take some time for you to, you know, trust yourself to be able to open up to him. And he wants her to go ahead and sing a song. And fair enough, you know, as things were getting right, Derek finally starts standing again. So as I thought, because if he's just starting to regain his strength to, like, walk again, then he should be stumbling around instead of walking around, dancing around the house like he's Michael Jackson or something. And that's how I suspected that it was just another damn daydream musical number. And fair enough, it was. So she confesses about her and Noah to him. So then, after that, we get to Noah meeting up with Star about um, the night before where he took pictures of him and Alex together. He is a hot mess at this point. Like, he's been a hot mess throughout this whole episode. And, you know, he just wants to let her know that, you know, he's worried that, you know, he might lose Star because she's been getting jealous. And, you know, he pretty much apologized to her. But then she clearly, like... She is clearly in her feelings at this point. Like, she is so hurt to the point that she doesn't even know what to do. Like, she is clearly in her feelings over it. And she ends up leaving him out in the cold. So then she realizes that her phone is missing from the dinner. And fair enough, it turns out that Brody took it and starts deleting the images from the phone. I knew I couldn't trust him. I just knew I couldn't. So then, later on, Ayana finally opens up to the press about how she cares about everything, including Lucky, and she ends up carrying her promise on helping Simone out with her testimony. Whoop-de-doo. So then, the episode ends with um, um, Cotton suddenly getting manhandled by her boyfriend from jail. And, you know, he's like, he like grab her by the neck and whispers in the ear, like, whispers in her ear, like, bitch, you ain't going nowhere. And I'm not leaving you this time. And fair enough, he rips off her robe, and he takes off his shirt. Mm, excuse me. Takes off his shirt, and they just, <laughs> he practically rapes her. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. Um, yeah, so that was Star faking it. Um, leave a leave a comment down below, and y'all tell me how y'all feel about this episode. Did y'all like it? Did y'all not like it? And hopefully, I will see you guys next Wednesday if I do have enough energy. And if I don't, then I'll see you guys next Thursday, probably around Thanksgiving.
Bye.